We begin tonight with breaking news out of the State House. A deal on the long negotiated minimum wage bill that would affect over a million workers. Today, Governor Phil Murphy, Senate President Steve Sweeney, and Assembly Speaker Craig Coughlin announcing an agreement on legislation to raise New Jersey's minimum wage to $15 an hour. This comes after months of debate and political wrangling. If passed, the base minimum wage would increase to $10 an hour on July 1st this year, 2019. It'll increase a dollar by the following January and continue to increase by $1 increments every January 1st until it reaches $15 in 2024. That scale shifts a bit for seasonal workers and workers at businesses with five or fewer employees, reaching $15 an hour by January 1, 2026. Agricultural workers were a sticking point in this negotiation. This legislation raises their wage to $12.50 an hour within five years. I'm joined on set by Michelle Sakurka, President and CEO of the NJBIA, and Alilia Mejia, Executive Director of New Jersey Working Families, and my colleague, NJTV News Senior Correspondent David Cruz, who just caught up with the governor right outside our studio here. Indeed, uh, Bree, the governor has an office in this building. Uh, we were lucky to get a chance to talk to him uh, just a few minutes ago. We asked him, for starters, what the, about to uh, the reaction from small business who say that this is going to have a severe impact on them. The Governor Murphy there announcing a deal on minimum wage and maybe a break in the logjam in Trenton, Bree. All right, good work. Thanks, David. Um, Anna Lilly, New Jersey Working Families, was really at the, the forefront of pushing for this reform after all this. Is this the legislation you were hoping for? I mean, I, I think we were hopeful for one track for all workers, but we're really pleased at how quickly um, New Jersey workers are going to get an increase. Um, the fact that we're going to experience a bump before year's end, and then by this time next year, workers are going to have more than a $2 um, increase is going to be significant. Um, this is particularly important not only for those workers, but for our economy, because in a consumer-driven economy, we already foresee these individuals are going to be able to stabilize their homes and maybe make some purchases that help um, small businesses and New Jersey's uh, employers. Michelle, I see your face, mm -hmm. your reaction. The governor essentially said the criticism about small businesses is unfounded. Well, let's let's be clear. This is another hit to New Jersey business. If we want to talk about the economy, let's talk about what New Jersey's job creators, in particular small business, have had to sustain over the last few years. We're just coming off paid sick leave. We're talking about an increase. We have an increase in energy costs because of nuclear subsidies. I mean, time after time, we just came off a budget that increased taxes last year for business. Um, the business community is reeling right now, and we're going into a budget cycle right now where we already have a shortfall coming at us. So we're at a fiscal crisis in New Jersey right now. New Jersey's job creators are at the center of it, and I just don't know how much more, how much more they can shoulder on their back. I know when I talk to them every day, they're telling me that they are at the breaking point right now. What about this phase in, though? Does that not help uh, that we're looking to ramp this up over several years? I mean, we're talking about quite a bit of time before we actually hit the $15. We know that this increase was inevitable. All through the negotiation process, we asked for a slow and predictive and responsible way in order to increase the minimum wage. So yes, can businesses plan? But to the point that was just made, we're looking at a $2 increase within one year. That, that's significant at one time for a small company. So, you know, yes, it is predictive. It is companies can now plan. But you want to know what I heard as I was driving up here from Trenton just now? I'm listening to the radio and I hear businesses calling in saying, I'm meeting with my executive team tomorrow. You know what my planning is? My planning is how many jobs do I have to cut over the next five years? What are we doing on our benefits? Small business pie is only so big, and the slices have been getting smaller and smaller every year. These are the job creators. These are the folks that are employing the families that you represent. And without those job creators here in New Jersey, we're going to be concerned. You're, you're about jobs, Anna Lilia. Yeah, I, I think that, again, I mean, our economy is based on consumers driving the economy and being able to make purchases to spur the entire system. The reality is that when you have workers who are making less than $18,000 a year, they're completely unable to make ends meet, much less actually be a driving force in New Jersey. The reality is that a million workers with more disposable income are people who are going to be able to go out to dinner, to make 
make purchases, to secure things for their children and their families. We've seen it in other states. We know that this has a positive impact. There is this initial reaction to be afraid that maybe there'll have to be some job cuts or some adjustments made. But what we've seen in other places is that you, you have a flourishing of the local economy, and this actually helps both workers and employers. Let's, let's put that into perspective just quickly, because under this, essentially, with the 885 an hour, which is the current minimum wage, a worker who has about 40 hours a week earns about $354 a week, $18,500 a year. With this, that same worker will earn $600 a week, just under $32,000 a year. Um, you're talking about more money into the economy. Michelle, you're talking about businesses having to shoulder this. The increase, though, isn't dramatic when you look at it from those numbers. So right now, all we're talking about is, is that increase in and of itself. Okay, let's talk about the impact to business in the bigger scale. Let's talk about compression. When we increase the entry level wage, every other wage above it, within an industry and across the entire economy has to be reset. So what happens when the paralegal walks into the law office and says, by the way, the, my son now at Burger King is making $2 less than I am, and I have a certificate, and I've been here for five years. What are you doing for me? The company has to reset every wage across its way. The second piece of this is we're looking at it as a snapshot <coughs> in time. What's concerning to us, there's no economic off-ramp that's being discussed. We're talking about a five-year phase, and regardless of the economic scene here in the state of New Jersey, we hear people talking about a recession within two years. We had Superstorm Sandy six years ago. If something like that happens, the state should be able to hit the pause button because every company in the state of New Jersey has to hit the pause button on wages when some crisis hits. The state has not accounted for that. We need to get to the drawing board and ensure there's an economic off-ramp. California has an economic off-ramp in their bill. Uh, uh, David, the governor had initially wanted $15 an hour for all. He was against this car these carve-outs, which really held up the negotiations. Did he indicate when you caught him briefly um, whether there would be a push further down the road or a time to reassess and, and relook at this? He only made reference to the situation concerning uh, agricultural workers and tipped workers. Will there be some kind of a commission that will determine the impact of, of those raises and whether or not they can increase further? But as far as the, an off-ramp that uh, Michelle's talking about, there's no mention of that in that deal. Anna Lilia, your take on that. I mean, Michelle's talking about really lifting the, mm. the skills of our workforce as opposed to setting this across the board mandate. I, I think it's, uh, you know, when I listen to Michelle, I think about the impact on regular New Jerseyans. Um, when we make mention of Superstorm super storm Sandy and other crises, we know that low-wage people, low-wage workers, are unable to secure safety for themselves because they can't afford to put gas in their car, because they can't afford to rent a, a hotel room to escape a precarious situation. What we're talking about is helping over a million workers, a million New Jerseyans, secure a little bit more economic stability. It's going to have a positive impact in New Jersey in terms of the safety net. It's going to have a positive impact in terms of additional funds and income tax. I mean, a bottom line, this is the most, um, the, the greatest economic boost that we could actually give the Garden State. Michelle, am I hearing you say, though, that we should anticipate seeing some changes as far as our workforce and as far as jobs numbers now moving forward? That's what you said you were hearing on the way up? Oh, absolutely. Again, I heard that the first meeting tomorrow going on in companies across the state of New Jersey is, yes, now we have to plan for the next five years. So we know what's staring us down in the business community. Yes, now we can plan for it. I'm concerned about what those plans include. Because the other piece of this, again, when I talked about that pie, total compensation. We have companies today that afford benefits to the folks that we are talking about, okay? If we're going to start shifting around and adding more onto that, the money's going to come from somewhere. They only have two sides to their balance sheet. The more we hit one side, they've got to take away on the other side. We're concerned that it's going to hit benefits. We're concerned that hours are going to be cut. And we are concerned that those who are looking to help the most, those with the lowest skill, are going to be left out because... When you say to an employer, you're now mandated to pay a certain wage, they're going to look for someone who has some skill set to bring to that wage. In the states in which this 20 has seconds, passed, 20 seconds. it just doesn't play out. I could understand the fear of the unknown, but just look at what's happened in other states. Understand how our economy works. When you take a look at the fact that we are going to inject this, this increase of resources to those who actually generate um, change in our economy consumers, then 
then we will see that we will find ourselves in a better place in New Jersey. Leave and the last word country. there. Thank, thank you, Anna Lilia, Michelle, <laughs> David Cruz. Thank you all so much.